Okay, this is part 17 in the series of Python Game Engine Programming. And so in the previous two lessons, we were switching scenes. And the last time we had done it, the cylinder was falling down. When it hit the plane, it would switch automatically. But so if you're going to create a game or something else, um, you want to be able to display something on the screen, you know, a score, uh, something, or like in my integral calculus videos, if you've seen those, I'm displaying, you know, approximate volumes. And in this case, I have added a text text object so I'll just get rid of it and I'll show you from scratch so from here I have this I'll just press shift a and right there I add text to the scene like that all right let's rotate that on Z because I'm obviously the other way rotate Z R Z 180 I just typed it like that all right and then I'll give it a name press N over here come down here and I'll call this game counter like that. So that's the name of our object here. And so we want something, when something happens into the scene, we want to be able to change this into a value and count for us. And we're going to have to do a couple things. One, we're going to need another variable like we've done before. In the earlier lessons, we were using a variable tracking the Z location of the cube. And so now we're going to use a different variable to track well, we'll use something. Well, I'll, we'll figure it out here on the fly. But let's just change this first, just to kind of have the initial number up here. So I'm going to press Tab, and I go into Edit Mode. And when I'm in Edit Mode, that's how I'm able to change the... Let's see. I'll change it here like that so you can see it. And I'll say, I'll type in Score, and with a colon, and then space, zero. All right, and then I'll leave edit mode. So that's what's going to show when it first starts up. So somehow I want to be able to change this zero here, but leave the score there at the same time. So with the, well, let's go back into the code. All right, so in the code, I'm looking at the cube object code associated with the cube, and we'll, we'll just put it in here since it's easy enough. And notice up here at the beginning of the scene, we did all our initializations and we, got these variables for a cylinder and the icosphere and we got those objects but we're also going to need to get something for the text object so we're going to put that here first and we'll say um, get the text object like this and we'll call it I don't know game counter text just to distinguish it from there is scene dot objects and that's going to be we just called that game counter did we call it game counter? Oh no. Let's see. Yes, game counter. All right. So then, so that's the name I'm going to use is game counter text when when I actually reference it. So that's the first thing we have to do. I'm going to make a little more space. Keep this separate. And now we need. Once we get it, we're going to have to do something to it. So let's do that first before we do anything else. Let's just kind of step through it and see if we can modify it. Let's put it down here on the. Uh, we'll put it down here with the A key just just for, for the moment modify the text modify the text object okay and so uh, let's just say game counter text because that's the name of the object now that we have and dot text is how you access the text of that object and we're just going to give it a new name and we're going to make it we'll just call it score colon one. Now this isn't going to be the way we actually change it. I'm just verifying that this is actually working for us. All right, and so that's with the A key. All right, so let's just go here. We're ha ha going to have to do this quick because you know how this cylinder is on us. That when this cylinder gets too far, <laughs> yeah, we're going to change that. When that cylinder hits the plane, it's going to switch to the next scene. I'm just going to push it up here for the second so it doesn't hit the ground quite so fast. Give me a chance to press the A key. All right, so I'm going to press P, and then I'm going to press A, and there it is. It changes the text right there on the fly. All right, I'll press A again, there it is. So it's not really keeping count yet, but it does show that we're modifying the text itself, okay? So that's step one. All right, now let's go back into the code. All right, so now um, let's, we'll, Actually, so we know this is what you use, game counter text, name of the object, dot text. All right, so then we put what we want within these double quotes like that. And then, but we also want to be able to do things like a variable. So we want to be able to 
keep track of a number as it goes. Well, just by entering, this is a string value within double quotes like this. Just by typing that in, that's not going to that's not going to fix the thing for us. We're going to have to do some little some tricks here. But we do de we do need a dictionary to keep track so when the routine runs cuz this routine keeps running over and over again. And so when it comes into the routine, we want it to be able to keep track with the with the variable like we've done before and we did that before right in here. We had the first time initialization of the cube location variables, right? And we called the cube was z location. And if it was not in cube object, which is the name of our controller here, then we initialized it the first time around. And otherwise, we don't want it to initialize. And this only is going to happen the first time. So we want to be able to do that. So let's just, I'm going to copy this also. And come down here, and I'm going to say initialize game counter variable. All right, and and I'm going to call it game counter. All right, like this is not in cube object. Init game counter like that. All right, so that's that. Then so we're going to have to go get a routine called init game counter. So we'll go down and look at the bottom like we did before. You should still have all this code. So it's easy enough when you do it this way, you can just cut and paste things. All right, so I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to call that init game counter instead. So now I have a new routine called init game counter and it's going to be the name of it instead of being z location there, we see if z location is in it we named it game counter all right so in here in place of that we just put game counter like that initial game counter and i'm going to say to z we'll just make these integer based to zero like this to initialize the game counter oh VAR variable like that. All right. So now we've initialized it. So then we can use it somehow. And the way we're going to use it, we're going to use it in here. Let's just use it within this routine. And this is the, uh, where is this thing? Then we're going to use it. Mm, well, yeah, okay, we'll do it up in here. We'll do it every time we press the A key. All right. So we'll do it in here after all. All right. So Every time we press the A key, we want the score to increment instead of, because in this case, every time we press it, it's just going to keep saying score is equal to one over and over and over again and nothing else. Well, so now we need a, some kind of way to do this. And the way you do this is you do this. You just copy this code. So I type in the name score colon space in parentheses. So that's always going to change. And this is part of a string. And then it's something else I want part of the string. This plus means add something else to this to the string. It'd be like um, if I typed a goal in double quotes, that is part of a string, and that's part of a string. So this would return score a goal. You're not going to see the plus symbol. That's just appending two strings together like that, right? But what we don't want to append two strings together. What we want to do is, let's go back and look down here. Remember how we had accessed this before? We'll just copy this and bring it up so you can see it. Oh, where did I go? I just lost it. No. Okay, so I'll just show you. I'll just put that here just for a second. So when we were changing the cube object position before, remember you had to access it via, these are dictionary entries, so the name of the cube the cube object is th this name up here of our controller and then and associated with that is the variable so we know the variable instead of z location we want game counter so that's what it's going to be called like this but we don't want anything to be associated with that because it's nothing with this here so we're just going to go back like this and 
So what I'm saying is now score, the game counter text is going to be equal to score plus the variable, the value of the variable game counter. Okay? And so then once we do that, then I'm going to say here increment the variable by one each time the A key is pressed. Okay. And this will really be modify the text object, but really we're incrementing this is a display the score. Like that. All right. So now we need to actually increment it. So we'll do the same thing down here. This is cube object and in single game counter and plus equals one like that. All right. So now what this should do, it should come back and display. Every time we press A, it should display score and, and plus this value in here. And then, oh, that's actually not going to work yet because this has to be a string. So string, we need to convert this to a string object. See, this is a, this game counter dot text is a string object. So what we need is to convert this to a string is here because this is this is basically uh, a value like an integer or double precision, but we want it we want to convert it to a string. We want to get the value and we want to convert it to a string. So now that essentially turns the value of this into a string. Okay, let's save that. And let's go back and see if it actually runs. Let's go in here. And you know me, I'm always going to make an error. Let's, I'll press P and then see if that cube comes down. It switches over, switches back. All right, now watch. It's still there. Every time I'm pressing that keyboard, it's getting set in the new scene. All right, so you switch scenes as long as it's doing it, it's doing that. All right, so that's the basics of setting up a score. You know, the really the, the key to doing it, of course, is just making sure that you have a dictionary value and that you initialize it one time, like up in here, and that way it doesn't, re if you don't initialize it once and you try and come down here within the A key and you just try and press it and increment it, it's, it's just going to revert back to the original value each time because it won't hold the value after it leaves the routine as it is. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.